So uh, like I mentioned today, we've got Pat, myself, and we've got Benny Boy uh, on uh, moderation as well. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so Pat, um, did you, that was a lot of talking by me, but did you want to do a bit of an introduction uh, of yourself and um, how you got into what you're doing and then what you do day to day, just so everyone gets a bit of an idea of um, how you fit in the mix? Yeah, sure thing, guys. Thanks for the uh, lovely intro there, Trav. And nice to meet everyone on the uh, on the hug today. Uh, so I'm Pat, like Trav said, I've been with Aircall for a bit over a year now, but I've been in SaaS for a couple of years. My job at Aircall is uh, channel partner manager. So essentially what I do is I work with different partners like, like Trav and a few others, um, particularly within the HubSpot realm. Um, my job is more or less communicating with them the value of the air call and the HubSpot relationship, and then um, I guess collaborating with them on projects and clients that uh, may have a need for air call. Yeah, nice, awesome. And um, I think um, we'll, we've got some questions kicking through, so we'll obviously uh, move to them soon. Uh, I think there's a question from Dan already. Um, but um, I guess uh, what I kind of wanted to do today uh, is I guess sort of um, with your experience in this sort of realm as well is is we often get given a whole bunch of different questions in regards to why or how does it work or so uh, I think you have, we've prepped a, a ho hopefully a deck on this, but can, uh, are you able to, to explain, I guess, uh, I, well, from an air core perspective as well, but I guess the whole uh, conversations side of things, the importance of it, and also tying that sort of back to HubSpot, but I think you've got a bit of a deck if you want to just kick it off if I'm pre-introducing that as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I do have a bit of a deck that I can uh, I can get going with. Um, let me see how this works. First time Bevy user. Hopefully this is going okay. <laughs> it's all good, mate. Um, awesome, guys. So I think at a high level, um, just on your, on your piece around uh, conversations and why they're important, um, obviously, if you're in a role that's very heavy phone dependent, you would naturally understand that, you know, i.e. a heavy phone uh um, like, a, like a sales or, or a support use case, you'd understand the value of the phone. Um, but I think as well, Trav, you sort of touched on it before, that I think that people are moving away a bit now from phones uh, in general in terms of their day-to-day. -day. I think with socials and, and texting and email, it's uh, I think the phone becomes a bit of second nature. So um, us at Echol, I guess our vision, what's been sort of pushed down to us from, from sort of our, our C-suite and the founders of the company is that the phone is still as important as ever. Um, what I think is important is that um, understanding that if you're using HubSpot or, or you've invested your money into a CRM, um, what Aircall does as opposed to your old phone system is instead of having like your CRM or your help desk tool like HubSpot and then also having a desk phone that sits on the side or some legacy phone system that doesn't play with it, um, tools like Aircall, what we really want to do is to work around that existing HubSpot experience. So understanding where you're already working and I guess trying to enhance the experience of that, um, that everyday user. Um, I just as a, a quick high level look at Aircall, I'm not going to, uh, I guess, throw a bunch of numbers uh, in, in your face or anything like that. The most important thing to know about Aircall um, is that, we're, we're, I mean, we're, we're a relatively large company, you know, we've got quite a few customers, but over a third of our customers are actually hubs. So our two businesses are very closely tied together um, to the point that HubSpot also invested in Aircall last year. So it's in their best interests um, if our software can cater to their users. I thought I'd um, quickly start off as well is just a couple of um, historical challenges that we get with phone systems. So when we get people coming into Aircall every day, these are more or less the same four pain points, I guess. And obviously they, they, they branch out from here, but these are kind of the four main things we get um, with phone systems that I hope that I can address today. And if, if they sound familiar to you, um, let me know. The first thing that I would say is uh, a lot of phone systems historically have had limited flexibility and complicated processes to modify users and numbers. So I think there's kind of two ways that I would break this down. Um, the first way would be if you have like a legacy phone system. So I think Trav, you sort of mentioned their desk phones before. Obviously, if you are bringing in new employees, um, you need more phone numbers, all that sort of stuff. There's a whole bunch of complicated work that has to go on there to install more phones, plug in the cable, speak to the IT guy, and that can actually you know, take weeks. Um, I think the other way to look at this is if you actually were one of the companies that hopped onto a bit more of a, a bit of a cloud-based or, or I guess an, an internet-based phone system a few years ago, um, the question I would have there would be, is it is it flexible? So if you have a new employee that starts today, can you get them a new user account right now? Can you get them a new phone number right now? 
Um, so that's probably the first thing that air cool looks to tackle. Very similar to how you could do it in HubSlot, actually. Your next challenge there that I've got is, is call data not being accurately logged in the CRM. So this is a pretty obvious one. It's probably, um, you know, I guess the main selling point of why air cool kind of exists. So if calls are being made, if text messages are being made, is it all being logged effectively into the CRM? So I think a lot of sales reps, uh, myself included, when I was when I was a BDR, um, historically will just log their outbound calls because that's what's important to most managers. However, what Aircall can help you do without um, really trying is any call, whether it's inbound call, outbound, missed call, voicemail, or whether it's one-to-one -one SMS, inbound or outbound, we're now capturing all that data straight away and pushing it right into HubSpot, right onto the contact level, the account level, and the deal level. So just capturing more visibility around all that data there. The third piece I'd touch on is just an inefficient handling and routing of inbound calling. So um, I think we all understand the importance of um, obviously not having any missed calls. I think that should be most businesses' goals. However, if you are receiving a call from a business, from one of your clients, I think that it's really important to be able to answer the phone instead of saying, Oh, hi, who's calling? Where are you calling from? What are you calling about? Um, being able to sort of quickly uh, address that instead of doing that saying, hi, Trav, how's it going? Are you calling about this open ticket? Are you about, calling about your open deal? Stuff like that. So just helping to provide that better customer experience. Um, and the last piece there that you might encounter with a phone system is um, call quality and post-sale support. So a bit less of a sexy topic, but if you are going to eventually migrate to an internet-based phone system, then the idea of call quality can pop up. Obviously, you're working with internet. So what you're going to need there if you do adopt a phone system like this is um, good call quality support, um, account managers, that sort of stuff who can address those issues quickly so you can get back on the phones. Um, any questions on anything there? Um, I, for me, uh, personally, not yet. I think that all kind of makes a lot of sense from what we can sort of see is – is that those those definitely phones on the desk um, and having someone start up the ability to, I think that's the big one for me. I mean, they're all very, very important sort of points, but um, having someone start up within the business, spinning up a number straight away, having a, you know, get them to download the app or whatnot straight away. And then sort of, it's already integrated with HubSpot. It's sort of, it's, you can kind of scale quite quickly, which I think is super important if we're talking about cost as well, cost and time. Uh, of the business, but um, but uh, if there's any other points that um, or challenges that you've had with historic phone systems that you've had in your business, um, shoot them across and we can um, discuss them in further detail. Fantastic. So I guess from here, I guess to address those challenges, these are kind of the reasons why um, a lot of customers in general, but also specifically HubSpot customers um, have adopted Aircall and what they like about it. So the first thing is that easy to set up and scale piece. Now, obviously me and Trevor have just touched on that. Having that new user that needs to come in, can you add them in? Can you add in a number? Can you get them trained up pretty easily? So getting rid of all that red complex tape around setting up a phone system. Um, the next piece that's really important and a, a little bit underrated with Aircall is actually having a local onboarding manager, having a local customer success manager, um, having a porting person. And, and porting, if you're not familiar, is the process of um, purchasing new numbers or taking your existing phone numbers and bringing them into Aircall. Um, and just having all those local roles based in APAC, you'll actually find that most uh, VoIP providers or, or cloud-based phone providers don't have a complete team based in Australia. Uh, we have a team of 50 or so here in Sydney and we have a have a global team that supports us as well. Um, the UI is clean. I'll, I'll show it to you guys in a second uh, when we sort of get there. Um, the last two pieces I'll touch on would be just the call quality. Um, again, not the sexiest topic in the world, but it is very important if you are going to use an internet phone system that um, you're relying on good carriers to, to handle those calls. So uh, Aircall uses a mix of the internet and also carriers. So we're a bit of a hybrid model, but what we will do is instead of just relying on, you know, your internet connection and one carrier in the market, if the carrier that we're using ever goes down at any point in time, like a Telstra, for example, Aircall actually has relationships with multiple carriers. So if one carrier ever drops out, we'll switch you across to the next best one instantly. So that's just our way of maintaining that uptime. And the last piece to talk about is obviously going to be the integration. Um, HubSpot is the big integration. That's what we're here to talk about today. But beyond that, we do also have integrations with, um, with a hundred other tools as well. If you are, um, a house that has, I guess, a, a not, not entirely consolidated system. One of my favorite. 
because I think is uh, we use a Voma to do some of our uh, transcription and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of brings that across as well. So any sort of conversations we have, whether it be Zoom or on the phone, kind of gets drawn back, it's just like HubSpot as well. Awesome. Mm. Um, at a quick snapshot, these are just some of the integrations we have available. Not going to sort of hammer at home uh, here too hard, um, but do just want to point out, I think when you think about the integrations that you want to have, you might be thinking, oh, I'm only going to need it for the CRM side, or I might only need it for the help desk side, or whatever else. Um, the cool thing is that Aircore can plug into a lot of these. Um, ideally, if you guys are big HubSpot users, you should be using HubSpot for most of this stuff. But on the off chance that you are you know, using an e-commerce site or using recruiting or, or one of these other communication tools, um, we can plug into a lot of these. Cool. I guess uh, now I guess I'll touch base on what you specifically get out of the HubSpot integration. Um, so I did have to cut this. I normally have like six or seven slides on this. I, I've kind of trimmed it down to one to make it nice and easy uh, to, to absorb for, the, for today's session. These are kind of the four main things you get um, out of the box, no complication required with an air call and HubSpot integration. So uh, first thing I'll touch on is if you are going to integrate the two tools, it takes like five steps, about 30 seconds. So nice and easy. That's the way that Aircall and Hub sort of built it out to be as easy as possible um, for the customers. But these are kind of the four things that I'd point out that you get um, straight away as that instant value. First thing is that piece I touched on around uh, knowing who's calling and why they're calling before you even answer. So if you receive a phone call on your Aircall phone, um, because we have a contact sync with HubSlot, it's actually a, a, a it works both ways as a contact sync. Straight away, you'll know who's calling, where they're calling from, and what phone number they're calling on. So instead of answering that phone and not knowing who's calling and asking those questions, you'll immediately know. But Aircall actually takes it one step further. What we also do, which you can see there in the, in the little image there, is we have something called the Caller Insights. What the Caller Insights will actually do is we'll pull up any... Um, any open deals, any open tickets, you can actually customize these as well if you like. Um, but the whole idea there is that if I'm the agent, I can immediately click into that CRM page. I can immediately click into the deal or the ticket and familiarize myself with the customer situation as I'm speaking to them on the phone. Um, the next thing that you can obviously do is workflows. So workflows, I think um, obviously Trav and the neighborhood team are the absolute experts on this. I think one of you asked a question about it um, in the chat. Um, Aircall is, and what, what really separates Aircall with HubSpot is the way that we've been able to customize the way that um, you can build a workflow on the back of what happens on an Aircall call. So um, some workflows, you know, if you if you use um, if you use maybe like HubSpot calling or something like that, you can trigger a workflow based on a call outcome. For example, like um, you know, missed call or, you know, call connected, whatever that may be, what Aircall allows you to do is completely customize it. So any outcome you can imagine for your business, um, you know, maybe you're selling a certain type of product and the customer has asked about that product. Maybe I'm a, you know, maybe I'm a, I'm a software company and I've booked in a demonstration or maybe I'm a support agent and somebody has called me um, about a critical issue. I've had to open up a ticket. All this can happen immediately on the back of just selecting what we call a tag in air call. So we call it custom tagging. Um, and that's where a lot of the value is and where Trav and the team at Neighborhood can, uh, can help you guys out. Um, the next feature on the bottom here is, is that call tracking that I spoke about before. So um, inbound calling, outbound calling, missed calls, et cetera, SMSs, all sitting right there on the, hub, on the, uh, on the hub feed. So you can just sort of go through and capture all that data and be a bit more transparent. So you know, if you get a hand handed an account one day, or maybe you're a sales manager, you want to go in and see all that stuff, it's right there. And the last piece as well is reporting. Um, obviously it's a SaaS tool, reporting seems to always come up. You can either bring air call reporting into HubSort or you can use the native air call reporting there as well. So uh, again, we've kind of catered for it both ways. Yeah, any uh, any questions on that or any any, uh, any thoughts? I like the, um, the main live dashboard that air call does have as well just gives you sort of insights to the day and how many calls missed calls and stuff it's actually pretty cool sort of live as well um i we might as well go one question while we're here because um dan uh said uh long time air caller first time asker uh what's your best tips on tackling the issue of a crm um being like filled up with inbound calls missed and received with no contact details. Have you seen any cool processes, settings or workflows to help deal with all of the clutter? I'd rather answer the question about San Atlantic, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tackle, I'll tackle <laughs> that the was, air that call. Was, that was the next one. <laughs> I'll tackle the air call on first. Yeah. So um, I'm not entirely sure what your setup would look like there, Dan. Um, 
The idea basically is, um, for those who, who aren't familiar, if you receive a phone call to uh, on your air call phone, if the customer exists within HubSpot, then obviously we've got the contact sync like I spoke about before. So you'll know who's calling, you'll have the contact details. I think Dan's question might cater more to if you're receiving a call from someone that you have potentially haven't spoken to before, mm. Um, and then potentially you're inside HubSpot um, and there's a bunch of, I guess, contacts being created or missed calls and about the best way to sort of handle that data. Is that, yep, that's correct. Is that right, yeah. Dan? Yeah. Yeah. So I think a bit of that actually comes down to, um, I guess, the process and the way that your business handles it. So um, what Aircall will do by default, um, there is a setting in Aircall's integration settings with HubSpot where you can decide if I receive an inbound call from an unknown number, do I want it to create a new contact within HubSpot? So that's probably your first step. Do I want that new contact to be created or do I want my team to um, you know, go in after the fact and then create that contact? So that's your first piece. Um, if you do create a new contact with Aircall, um, the way that it basically creates itself is it'll create a new contact instantly and all you're going to get in there is the phone number in the phone number field. And I believe in the name we'll have... Okay. It'll be just like that number and then it will say new contact. So mm. um, the best way that I've seen for this to be handled, um, obviously, if you're um, if you're on the call as you're speaking to that new contact, you can update the contact either within Aircall or within HubSpot and it will sync back across. Um, if you're doing it after the fact, um, I'm not too sure what could be done there from sort of like a workflow perspective. I don't know if you have anything, anything on that there, Trav. But for me in this instance, what I always sort of say is, is that, if you've got a really high inbound calls of people that aren't necessarily going to be in the CRM already um, and missed calls, turn off that feature. Um, and then obviously um, all of that data is still getting captured with inside air call as well. So there is that native integration as well. So uh, maybe a good rule of thumb would be to turn off that native, uh, turn off the creation of the new contacts. Um, and then basically once that person does pick up or, or, or does get connected or anything along those lines, you can then obviously update that within the on the uh, iPhone, Android or the desktop uh, and then get that created uh, as you're having that conversation and potentially just build that into the process of either the sales or inbound sales or uh, support team or anything along those lines. Um, we have run into the... <laughs> We, we did run into the issue of, uh, of having just, you know, thousands of calls. And so what we did is we just turned it off uh, and then basically we create that whenever that person, uh, when we do connect with that person. But one thing to note is that we don't lose the data on how many, per how many times that person's called. So if that person's tried to call 10 times and it's missed, and then we eventually, that's still logged within sort of air call as well. So we'll be able to sort of make sure that that data doesn't get missed uh, at the same time. But that's what I do. Anyway, looks like Dan awesome too. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, sweet as we'll, we'll ask about the shirt. Um, uh, the next, the next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, have you got any any more? Uh, was that all for the slides, or you got any more? Yeah, that was most of my slides. So I didn't want to uh, do death Go by to slide deck today. <laughs> that's all good. No, that's all good. All right. So um, I guess what I um, what I had in store today is is I kind of wanted to look at a couple of different sort of scenarios, I think, when it comes to uh, different roles within a business. So uh, say, for example, you're a salesperson um, and um, we've sort of we're answering inbound calls. Uh, and I'll, I think Tyler's joined us today. Yep. She's at the bottom there. She's joined us. Um, she runs uh, the growth side uh, here at Neighbourhood. So she's um, in charge of uh, fueling all incoming calls, uh, following up with people, running connect calls, exploratory calls, presentations, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit around, I guess, that sort of like process and what you sort of foresee from a salesperson. And now we're smaller. We've only got really sort of one you know person or two, if you want to call it that, running that sort of sales engine at the front. But obviously, can can air call scale like how many people can you sort of get is there a sort of upper limit on where you guys would sort of start to have a bit of a rickety ship or what what's that number so that people got a bit of an idea from a sales aspect you mean in terms of like total users yeah yeah so say for example look would a sales team of 50 uh would that suffice 
Yeah, one hundred percent. So I think um, just as, a, and I probably didn't do the proper air, intro to air call, but yeah, we, we've historically been a very SMB focused tool. So most of our customers have been in that that what you'd call small business or what we we call internally as mid market. What air call can actually cater to is anywhere from realistically three to five users up to, I'd probably say three to four hundred is sort of what we're shooting for. Wow. So. I think that you just get, um, depending on how big your business is, uh, that will, I guess, determine uh, what air call features are going to be more important to you. And the most important thing, once you get up that higher level of uh, users, is making sure it's really optimized within HubSpot. So 100%, yeah. you can cater for, for that many users, for sure. Yeah, awesome. And I guess um, what I was going to ask is from that sales side, and, and we'll go into the customer service side and, and potentially some support as well, okay. is... Um, is there a chance for you to potentially share your screen and, and maybe look at some of that integration and what we're sort of, what we potentially, hopefully you've got a demo account or something along those lines. You'd hope so. <laughs> or or, or I'll <laughs> it on your last second. But yeah, like um, it'd be great sort of for people that are in a sales seat that are here today and, and watching, I guess, post on YouTube is that um, what will it look like for me and what does it look like visually and what information can I see um, to help me, I guess, do my job more effectively? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, sick. Cool. I think that would be better. And then we can potentially look at customer, uh, like the support side of things as well within HubSpot and how that sort of plays. Mind you, uh, if there's anything that we sort of share on the screen here as well that you kind of want to poke a stick at or want to ask questions about as well, um, just make sure um, that you uh, do it in the chat as well and Ben uh, will capture you. Cool. So... Also, Tyler, if you've got any... I know, so Tyler, she's uh, kind of been using... I think air call for years now. So Tyler, if, if there's uh, extra little hacks as well uh, that you kind of want to say in your journey of using it, um, just um, just reach out in the chat too of how you best like using it too. Yeah, Tyler's a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool guys. I guess to talk through, um, I guess just a really high level intro to air call and I guess how it looks and feels and appears as a software. Um, there is three main interfaces for air call. Now, um, obviously, dependent on your role, that will depend on how much you're going to need to see and how much you're going to need to do with an air call. Um, I'll probably start off with, I guess, what the agent experience looks like. And then I think later on, we can maybe touch on some of those um, more support or, I guess, admin use cases and what pulling some of that data looks like. But in terms of the three interfaces that we have, first of all, we have the, uh, the admin dashboard over here on the left. This is where you would uh, typically go in this is where most of your admins are going to sit. So this is where you can easily configure new numbers and you can put in new users and new teams. Or if you're in like a, a manager sort of position, you want to pull some stats or data around, you know, calling, um, you can do all that here. This is also where you can easily um, set up your integrations with HubSpot. So nice and easy. You can't really get lost. We don't have uh, anywhere near sort of the layers that, that like a HubSpot does in terms of what, what you can find. It's a pretty sort of simple menu. Over here on the right, this is what we call the soft phone, or, or I guess the, the almost, almost the dialer, if you will. So this is the application that's going to sit on your desktop. Now, we can either make this de this application um, sit here on your desktop, or you can actually use it directly within HubSpot as well, um, within the interface there. Though we, in most cases, we do recommend using the app as you do get a bit of a stronger experience from our perspective. Last thing you get, we also have a Chrome extension. So. The way the Chrome extension basically works is it'll highlight any number on a page. Um, and then you can basically, if you want, you can pull together a list of contacts and then you can um, bulk dial as well. But I'll touch base on, I guess, what that power dial looks like. That's in a cool. Because that's a good, um, a good I forgot sell. about that one. Good, good sales <laughs> use case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what I might do first, guys, I might, um, I'll give an example of, I guess, if I was a sales rep and I was going to uh, make an outbound call, I guess what that would look like. So um, what I could do is um, I could either, first of all, I can come into my phone here and I could um, search for the person I, that I want. So let's say I want to call Dima Woodsley today. And what I've actually done there, it's actually pulled the contact across from HubSpot. So I can search for it directly within my phone. That's fine. I can also do that, again, on my um, my mobile phone as well. So I forgot to mention that at the start. You can have the application on your mobile phone, on like iPhone or Android, um, or you can have it on the computer. The whole idea behind this is that if I'm obviously at my desk and I'm working normally, then it makes sense I have the app up. But if I'm you know, in the kitchen, if I'm getting a coffee, if I'm at mum and dad's, whatever, um, if I'm receiving a call on my application, I'll know that it's a work call. And the most important thing is that when this call is done, I'm still going to get all the benefits as if I was uh, right at my desk. Back to the sales use case. Um, so I've searched for the contact there. I can click in and call. 
what you could also do is again by using that chrome extension i could actually just click straight from the portal and i could basically dial straight away so i'm going to highlight that in green and then what i can actually do there is i can click that number and that will pull that across over here to air call and i can dial that from there so um how long how long um like say for example um a contact goes in the system do you know what the sync time is from like obviously being within HubSpot or Aircall and, and kicking over to each other. Is there a rough idea? I don't have the rough, uh, I wouldn't have a rough number on me, but I think it's pretty fast. I, I, I would like to say it'd be pretty quick, like within a couple of minutes, but um, okay. Sweet. Let, me, let me see if I can confirm for it after the call. I don't believe it takes too long for it to sync at all, actually. We might we might get Benny to, to jump uh, on a uh, on the uh, support area of air call not, while, we, while not, we talk. Knowledge base. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Um, so what I'm going to do now is you know, pretend I'm a sales rep. I'm making an app and call. This is, what, I guess, what that process would look like. So I'm going to call, hit dial, and I'm just going to answer the call on my uh, on my mobile phone over here. Okay, so Tyler's saying it's within a minute she gets the uh, notification. Yeah, so that um that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that's fast. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> perfect. Um, what's basically happened there, guys, is I've made an outbound call. Now this is my personal mobile phone number, so you know feel free to call me. But um, <laughs> now I've, I've answered the call. Now I'm inside, I guess, that calling environment. So if I'm the sales rep, this is obviously when I'm going to be leading with my agenda. Um, I can obviously see who I'm speaking to. Um, now what can sort of happen, I guess, on the call or beyond the call? So I will quickly show you as well. Um, we do have the caller insights here. So ideally, if you're a sales rep, you should probably already be in uh, I guess the contacts page where you want to be calling from, but if you do need to click in and open up the deal, open up the the, the page, you can do so. But in terms of I guess sort of managing um, I guess the phone call interface and what you can realistically do from it. So um, if you ever do need to bring anybody else into the call, obviously if you're a sales rep, you're probably not too keen to bring your manager onto the call or or show anything like that. But we do have a few um, pretty easy conferencing features that you can manage. So you can add people to the call. You can either um, add in internal teammates. Um, you can put in or, or any, any contact you have sitting within your phone, or you can even just punch in random numbers. I can grab Aaron, for example, here, who I can see is online, and I can add him onto the call. I also have the ability to transfer. So at Aircall, we use terminology uh, cold and warm transfer. So to use poor Aaron again, because he's first in the alphabet, what I can basically do now is I can send a call to Aaron um, straight away without telling him and just, you know, he'll just have Seymour popping up and seeing him. Or I can actually call Aaron first and say, hey, mate, I'm going to transfer Seymour to you. He, he wants something. So um, I actually received, cool. I received a cold transfer the other day out of nowhere and I totally got blasted the bloke that sent it to me. So avoid, <laughs> avoid doing that too much. Um, what you can also do as well is assign. So if somebody's not available for the call, um, let's say there, because Aircall basically has a... Um, Aircall basically has a filter for whether you're available and ready to receive calls. If you're not available to receive calls, then um, it will skip you. But let's say someone's unavailable and I want to assign it to Aaron or I'm going to just do it to myself. Then what I will basically get is I'll have a notification in my phone uh, to give Seymour a call back. So that's nice. kind of some of your more sort of common admin features there. Last two things, and probably the most important things uh, beyond your, you know, your sort of basic functionalities around here, like mute, hold, keypad, and, and uh, the recording of the call, is your notes and your tags. So notes and tags are now going to be, I think if you do adopt a tool like Aircall, this is where you want uh, your agents to be, I guess, putting in the details around what's happening on the call. So this is where you can communicate and say, you know, called Seymour, you know, booked a demo, whatever it may be. The most important thing is that this note is going to go and sit within the HubSite um, activity feed, like you can kind of see it already populating here. The next and most important thing I would say is the tagging. So like I said before, the tagging is what really sets Aircall apart. Tagging allows you to put in any customized outcome based on your business. So tagging is completely um, customizable within Aircall. You can either work with your uh, your Aircall team to help set up those tags, or you can even work with the guys that, with Trav and the neighborhood guys on what tags might work for your business. But this is when you can basically set up and say what's happened on the call and any customizable thing can happen. So. I'm going to keep my demo booked example just to keep the sort of sales rep uh, narrative sort of consistent here. And that's basically a narrative. So let's say I've had a successful call with Seymour. I put in my notes. I put in my tags. Not too much has sort of happened on this call, but the cool thing is that it's automatically logged into my uh, CRM straight away and I can go back and listen to it or, or read over the notes later on. Um, any questions before I hang up the phone there?
One thing uh, Tyler is saying is that a cool feature that she finds is that uh, you can set up a wrap time. So if you work in a high volume inbound call business, you can set a time limit uh, before you receive another call. That way you can wrap it up and uh, do all the admin between calls. 100%. 100%. Yeah, no, no. Le le learning more every day. Yeah, the wrap-up time is really, um, really useful if you're if you're a, a sales user or a support user, actually. So if you need to put on a bit of a wrap-up time between calls, make sure that you're not going to get hit again. Um, you can do so. So that is good use cases for inbound calling. So if you're getting smashed, then uh, you can turn that on for like a 15 or 30 second or, or minute break, whatever it is. It also can work good for your uh, your power dialing sessions, which I'll touch base on in a second. So if you yeah. uh, you set up 50 people to call, you're a sales rep, and you hit go, um, if you're going to smash out 50 calls in a row, maybe you want to give yourself 30 seconds between calls to can have you, some water, can, catch your breath. Can you explain um, what, what a power dialer is? Just yeah, 100%. Just playing at home. <laughs> so, I think, so I'm just going to close that up there. Um, a power dialer is a feature available for um, AirCall Pro users. The way that it basically works is it allows me to, by using the AirCall um, Chrome extension here, what it's going to do is it's going to read every single number um, on a contact wow. page or, or on a list, for example, not just within HubSpot, for example, you can run this on like a Google Sheets or anything that's basically um, an internet uh, interface. If you search like a Google page, for example, and there's a few phone numbers that popped up, what it will do, it'll pick up every single phone number on the page, but in HubSpot, it's a really good example of how you can leverage it. And then what I do here, I add the power dialer, and then basically it's, it's going to open up my phone, and I can basically, uh, from there, I can hit go and play. And then basically what's going to happen here is it's going to call each one of these phone numbers one after the other. Whole idea being that I can hop on the call, um, put in my notes, put in my tags, end the call, and then that next, next call can start straight away or after that wrap-up time that we said. Well, that's good. So if you've got some KPIs around stuff, uh, salespeople that they need to be making 20 calls a day, they spend their mornings planning out who that is, add it to the power dialer, and then they can just chew through it all and hit it one by one without having to go back to HubSpot, back into the caller, back to HubSpot, back into the caller. Definitely. So I think when I used to do, uh, when I was an outbound sales rep, I used to, I'd have like a list of numbers I'd have to call and I would call everyone. And then afterwards I'd go into each contact person. I'd put in the, uh, you know, the details around what happened on the call. What AirCall does is, yeah, you can just hop on the call and as you're writing your notes on that call, it's all going to go straight there. Um, so the amount of admin that you're saving just by, by you know, doing mm. a power dial session is really productive. Nice. What you can also do if you take it one step further, uh, not to go too far down the workflow route, but if you do have workflows set up, then basically whatever you choose for that tag can then enable a workflow for something else to happen. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a question. Uh, can I see AirCall's callback feature? For example, if my support team misses an inbound customer call, uh, does AirCall have an option where the inbound caller has an opportunity for a callback? Yes, absolutely. So the way that that Good works question. is... And he's from California too. So it's... Cali. Late, 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 late at night? Maybe? Yeah. It's, definitely, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely not morning. <laughs> um, so the way that that works is a setting that you would set up on the uh, the numbers. So basically what you can do, um, this is basically our numbers screen that we've got within AirCall. I'm just gonna click into one of my, one of my phone numbers that I've got here. So um, this is my, my landline number that I just use mostly more or less for demo purposes. Um, so what you can do if you're, I guess to, to give just a high level look at, I guess what numbers basically look like. Um, so I'm, in, I'm inside this phone number, let's say that I've gone through the process and created it within a few seconds. This is where you can come in as an admin and you can start modifying, I guess, the way that you want the number to be configured. Um, mm. I will get to the callback feature in a second, just thought it'd be good to sort of give a, a quick overview. Lead in, yeah. Yeah, of course. So basically the way that it works is, and I think the main thing I think of when I see this is, um, it looks a little bit like a workflow, but the main thing that I understood when I, when I first saw this feature is that you are taking away that legacy idea that like the IT guy has to manage your phone system. Anyone, literally anyone could manage this thing. All you're really saying here is that when a call comes into this phone number, if the hours are open that we set, um, a bunch of things will happen. And if it's outside the hours, then we can customize the hours message. It goes to voicemail, et cetera. When a call comes in, this is basically the way that it flows. You can see here, I've added in some users. So at the moment, it's gonna go through that process. It's then gonna hit me and ring me for 30 seconds. I can customize this as I see fit. 
if I miss the call, it's going to call my boss. He's probably going to be pretty pissed off, but it'll call Frank. Now, let's say Frank, for example, isn't available for the call. He's marked as offline, or maybe he just doesn't answer the phone because he doesn't want to answer the phone. What we can actually do then is we can add in what we call a team. So this is where um, I think, Trav, you asked before about when you've got a lot of people that are working for an organization. Mm. A cool way that you can group them together to spread out those, those users is by putting in different teams for, I guess, different use cases. What I've got on here, for example, is a BDR team grouped together with four different users. Um, and what we can actually set up is, is it going to ring these guys? If it hits these guys, is it going to ring them simultaneously or at the same time? randomly one after the other or the best feature and the best way to do it in my opinion is longest idle so who has had a phone call in the longest period of time so who's slacking off <laughs> yeah exactly who's, who's, who... and you can you can filter for that later on in, in stats as well but um that's kind of the way that you can distribute calls um you can add in teams and users as you see fit you can drop and drag people nice and easily um as you go so again taking all that complexity out of the phone system setup now, on the callback uh, request feature, you come in here to our settings, and you can see we have a few different settings here around queuing time and priority calling. The cool thing, though, is the callback request. So what the callback request, which I think one of you just asked about, is it allows it so that if somebody is calling in and they are alerted that potentially there could be a bit of a queue, let's say we're an organization that gets quite a bit of inbound calling, then what Aircall allows you to do is you can put in the intro message at the top here. You can say, hey, um, welcome, we'll take a call in a few minutes. However, if you don't want to hold, um, you can press start and receive a call back. So basically, let's say somebody is impatient, they go, cool, I'll take a call back. What they can basically do is they'll hit star on their phone, it'll end the phone call, and then the people that were on the call distribution to receive the phone call next, they'll have a notification in their phone that looks similar to... To do the assigned or to do yeah so in the mm. in this list here and it will say this person um yeah you've got you've got to call this person back so that's more or less the way that it'll appear in the user's phone yeah nice and then um say one question uh that we had uh a little while back is um sometimes uh they had a sales team uh two of them worked monday to thursday the other one worked seven days a week is there a way that we can sort of like uh like customize when these people actually start working and when they're available so that it doesn't send phone calls to people when they're, you know, on holidays or, uh, you know, they don't work that day. Is there features and functions for that? hundred percent. Great question. So, um, you can, you can customize the, uh, the hours 100% and you can do it either on the number level or on the, uh, on the user level. So, uh, to give you an example of what you were just sort of talking about there, if I come in here to users, what I can actually do, and I can actually do it within my own, my own personal app over here on the side, but to give you an idea, let's say I want to have a look at myself here. I can find my, my user account, and you can have your own user settings as you can for numbers as well, but we've got availability, and at the moment, I'm just set myself as um, available 24-7. That doesn't really matter because my phone number itself, its hours are only set to, you know, uh, eight till six, whatever, Monday to Friday. But mm. for your example, um, let's say you had a phone number that you wanted to keep open full time. And I had a sales rep that was, uh, you know, working mon what was it Monday to Thursday or Monday to Friday, something like oh, that. Yeah. You can have that set up as, you know, eight to six for that person. And then all you'd really want to do is um, set the other person up for, for their hours, basically. So that's the whole idea. So the reason why this is important is obviously if you're if you're at your desk again, it's great. But the whole idea is that if I if I'm off work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever it is, let's say I get a lovely three day weekend, the idea is that I'm not going to receive any work calls to my mobile phone because it's marked me as offline. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. really really good. Um, another question that popped into my head just using the widget, uh, the AirCall app uh, on your computer. Uh, I noticed that uh, on the call insights, it obviously had the details of that person inside HubSpot. Mm -hmm. If there's um, multiple deals or multiple tickets of them, or will it just show the first one? Or it will show any, any of them? I think there is a setting for that. Um, I think it will show the first one it will read. I think that's the yep. way that it works. Okay. Yeah. Question. But you, you, you could edit that as well if need be? Yeah, it's, it's customizable um okay that stuff so um it comes i think it comes out of the box with what we assume people would want to see which is the the, the open the open deal or the open ticket yeah um but i believe it is to a degree customizable for that so yeah yeah awesome um and I, I guess one of the things i like the activity feed i don't know i don't know if this is an active account or whatnot but i know the activity feed within sort of hubspot 
Um, air cooler. Uh, air, air cools. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the one I was talking about before, which is a bit of a live, um, a bit of a live um, uh, view of when you go full screen of, of how how the company's performing from a, a, a talk. Yeah, to a, a I'll, uh, I'll, quickly touch base. I'll quickly touch base on this just because it's it's a good example because we have people on the call. So the activity feed is really when we start getting uh, beyond air cool being a phone system and it starts becoming a bit of a I guess a call center feature in a way. So. What you're sort of seeing here, this is a really, I guess, I guess, enterprise feature historically, which is your ability to see um, who's calling um, you know, within my organization. So I've got Sam. Sam's an SDR, probably calling this person to to ask about their demo request. Jake's an account executive, probably trying to close the deal right now. But the coach button's really cool. I can hop in, I can click the, into the button, and I can listen to the call as they are on it. So really good idea for any sort of coaching that you want to be doing uh, for, for new reps. And you can actually take it one step further and you can actually what we say, uh, I think the terminology is call whisper. So whisper. I can speak to Sam or Jake or Mitch as they're on the call, but the person on the other end won't hear me. So um, great use cases there for support, I think is the, is the good use case. Maybe some entry level uh, sales, uh, some entry level sales stuff. I mean, you don't want to be overusing this feature, I, I don't think, but no. it does exist. Micromanagers uh, dream this one. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. I'm so glad I don't have like a high volume of calls anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that, that feature does exist, and I think a lot of our um, a lot of the support leaders that we speak to um, in Canada's kind of use case, and a couple of your more like your your your, uh, your outbound dialing sort of managers, they 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 like this as well. Yeah, I personally have two questions. Um, first of all, uh, I know. Uh, well, it's kind of a, a lead question, but the uh, spinning up a phone number. So what we've found in the past is that people might be doing outdoor advertising. They might do Google ads. They might do uh, uh, various different types of channels of which sometimes not all of this is trackable. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you can't track uh, a billboard and how many people have called from a billboard. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do is delegate different phone numbers to those different types of marketing activities that aren't trackable. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to spin up a number or create one and then sort of, is it, does it take, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm asking a question I already know the answer to, but <laughs> some, of the some of the questions that we get is how fast can I spin a number up? Uh, will it be like local to Brisbane or do I have to sort of take a Sydney number or a US number? What's the process for that and how, how does that work? Yeah, sure. So uh, numbers really falls back into that ease of use category I was speaking about before. But uh, again, to talk you through, similar to how I set up the configured the number before, um, this is a really easy process. So at Aircall, you have two options. You can create a new phone number within the Aircall portal or you can port an existing number in. So if you are, for example, a new customer, you're moving across from like a, you know, like a different phone system. Uh, let's say you, you have a phone number with Telstra, or whatever it is, and you can say, hey, actually, we want that number to go into Aircall. Then what our team will basically do is you let us, our team know uh, what number you want brought across. And then our team will say to you, cool, we'll need this, this, and this off you, but then we can go get it for you. So nice and easy, I guess, communication with, with, our, with our local team there to get that number for you. But... Creating a new number is much funner and easier and cooler. So what you can basically do if you want to create a new number, um, you have two different options. So what Aircall is going to ask you, first of all, um, do you want to have a classic number or an IVR? Um, an IVR, if you guys on the call aren't familiar, it's kind of like when you call the bank and they, they say, you know, press one to speak to sales or press two to speak to service. And then the call routes out that way. So mm -hmm. you can have that with an air call. Using your, your simple example there, Trav, um, let's say we want to have a classic number for now. Nice and easy. Great. Where do you want the number? Well, Aircall has um, uh, numbers in, I think, I think it's over 100 countries you can actually um, get in the end. So if you need a different uh, a phone number for a different country, like, like a New Zealand or Singapore, whatever it is, you can set up a number for that and call into that, that market there locally with a local number. But um, let's go Australia to keep it nice and easy. Uh, do you want a local number or a mobile number? And if you do want a local number, which region do you want it from? And then basically immediate activation of your number ready to be used. And I could press go. I can leave the users off for now or I'm not going to throw myself on it. And I can just call it Pat's Brisbane number. You create. That number should be created instantly. And then the only other thing that you need to do before you can start using it straight away is you just need to put a user onto it. So that's number is oh, good. So it's already spun up just then. It's good. It's good. And the last thing I'm going to do just to show off is if I put myself on it. Great. 
I'm on this phone number now. And now if I should be able to see it from my phone over here, my Brisbane number, now I can call out from that number straight away right this second, or I can uh, receive an inbound call on it as well. One of the um, things that Tyler did say in the chat there is it, um, uh, another cool feature is I find, uh, no, that was the other one. Um, uh, you can call from different numbers. I'm sure everyone in sales has been ghosted before and it's really kind of annoying. <laughs> Not, and this isn't sort of like a lead in to be more annoying in sales. Uh, obviously all the salespeople invest a lot of time uh, into helping develop the solution of what they need. Some people think it's all right to just ghost people after all that hard work's been completed. Um, but uh, I think Tyler and I had a bit of a laugh at this uh, as well, is is it, because uh, it's happened in the past, is that, um, you know, we've obviously, we've got about six or seven different numbers, all of which are mobile, uh, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, South Australia, Perth, and all that sort of stuff, Singapore, and I think Hong Kong. Um, we were struggling to get a hold of somebody, uh, and uh, I just called from the Melbourne number and picked up straight away. <laughs> so it's good. It's good to try and um, use that feature as well, just to try and obviously um, uh, get in touch with somebody or, 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 or sort of try creative ways to try and close a deal or get in touch with somebody. Definitely, it's uh, it's amazing how often that works. <laughs> it's, uh, we're, not, we're not recommending it, but uh, but you can uh, you can of course uh, you can set up as many numbers as you need in whatever location that you need and call out from there. Um, no. I am cautious. I haven't spent a lot of time with within HubSpot. We sort of we sort of got a bit um, air call focused. Um, do you want me to answer anything pertaining to the HubSpot integration or how that works? Uh, well, I've got one more question. If anyone's got any questions with uh, with Aircall or HubSpot, the integration or calling best practices overall, um, just throw them in the chat. But you did mention um, you did mention something around uh, text messages and stuff like that. Is is that uh, ha is that native within HubSpot? Do, yeah. Where where do I go to to do to do that? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, short answer is yes. So, um, Aircall is predominantly a calling solution, but we have got one-to-one -one SMS uh, functionality built in. So, uh, if you want to text someone, you do basically the same thing I did before when I clicked into the number and I get up into my phone, but now I can actually come in here and find the texting interface. So, if I come into here, uh, these are like, for example, a text, and then I can actually, within my, my keypad right here, is I can just punch in some text and, and sort of send it gotcha. out. And someone texts me back, it's going to come back. Now, you can see these two texts here that I did before when I was just sort of setting up before the call. What you can see now is those texts are going to one-to-one log, um, like so. So that all just gotcha. sits there and logs. And while I'm here as well, that call that I logged before, that put itself within HubSpot almost instantly as well, just while I'm there. I will say with the text messages too, um, we have had a few people be like, oh, well, could I, um, could we do a workflow? Yes, you can. But if you've got the app on your phone, it, it just pops up and shows you that the text messages has been received while still logging inside HubSpot too. So you could get sort of tricksy Hobbit and go ahead and create workflows and get everything set up. But realistically, if you've just got the app on your phone, uh, it pops up as a uh, push notification anyway, and you'll see that notification come up. So uh, you probably don't necessarily need to do that much work. So. Yeah, definitely. I think with SMSing, and again, again it, it pops up for us, you know, in, in sales side, because I think it, it, you need to sort of have a think about how much texting you actually need to do. So if you are texting prospects and clients uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, of course, just use the air call phone on the fly on your phone or, or, you, or use it on the desktop like I showed you. If you do need to get more complex with workflows or blog messaging, of course, you know, message media and those guys that, that you would have seen before are fantastic for that. So uh, yeah, awesome. that's what you need. Well, we're at the top of the hour at 11 o'clock. Um, if there is any other questions that we've got, I'll do a bit of a wrap up, but I'll keep an eye on for it anyway. Uh, I will just quickly do this. Doo -doo -doo. Thanks, Pat, for sharing all that stuff with us. I learned two things that I didn't know, which is pretty good. But um, if any, <laughs> if anybody we should do this more often, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with Pat, uh, just to discuss it. Or uh, I think um, Pat mentioned that um, they usually spin up like a week sort of trial. That you can have a go um, and then sort of integrate it and spin up a few phone numbers and have a bit of a go with that. Uh, that's Pat's email address there. Um, or if you record this, his phone mobile, you can call Seymour as well. If you remember that one as well um, too. So just a reminder as well, uh, the 2nd of March, which is four weeks from today, uh, Bree and I are going to be catching up and diving into HubSpot and some tips and tricks and stuff that you might or might not be aware of that you could be doing 
to help it sort of flow a little bit easier and also uh, sort of uh, be a little bit more efficient and get more out of your HubSpot investment anyway. So uh, a big thank you to Pat. Thanks, mate, for catching up. It's always a pleasure to catch up and have a, have a yarn with you anyway. Um, but um, uh, like I said, uh, Pat's email is here. We will send a recording of this video. Um, we'll send a recording. Oh, there's a phone call. Uh, we'll send a recording of this video, uh, I guess, uh, to the group and everybody. Uh, and it will be up uh, online, I think, within the next sort of uh, hour or so. Uh, but if there is any questions, feel free to email uh, myself, Ben, uh, or Pat anyway. But um, but thanks heaps, Pat. I appreciate um, coming on today. Thanks, Trav. Thanks, everyone. No worries. We didn't get around to the uh, to the uh, to the shirt, but um, maybe we, <laughs> we ran out of time. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks again, Pat, and thanks everybody for joining for the first one for the year. Cheers, guys. See you guys. Bye.